Well, here we are, Fuzz, five miles out of Rock Creek. This is where we're supposed to look at our orders. What's the matter, scared? Me? No, I ain't scared, sir. Sealed orders usually means it's a tough assignment. We'll probably have to stand up to 50 or 60 bloodthirsty cutthroats. But it always makes the job more interesting, huh? Yeah. Hey, I'm ordered to take a vacation at the Lobos Ranch, four miles this side of Rock Creek. Very funny. Come across with the real orders, Fuzzy. You got the real orders. Marshal Conway knew you'd take up a rocket, so, so he... So he tricked me, and you were in on it. Is that right? Oh, look, Shy. You haven't had a rest in three years. You're not going to be any good at all if you keep it up. I'll turn into a raving lunatic if I had to sit around the Lobos Ranch. Oh, it's a nice, friendly place. Besides, the owner's an old buddy of mine. And don't you worry about being bored. Let's go. <laughs> No you stalling, Shy. Hop off your horse. We're going in. Stay right where you are, both of you. Well, uh, we were going... We've to... got plenty of help. There's no jobs open. That's too bad. Come on, Fuzzy. Oh, well, wait a minute. We want to see Steve Lobos. Steve Lobos is dead. Now, get going. Old Steve? Uh, he's dead. I'm sorry about your friend, Fuzzy, but there's no point in our staying now. Come on. Well, if Lobos is gone, I'm going in there and see whoever's running this place now. Yeah, Fuzzy. It wasn't your fault things didn't work out. We'll head back to Bolton City, and I'll explain everything to the marshal. Uh, no, you don't. You ain't gonna sneak out of it this easy. I got my orders, and we're going back to Rock Creek and find another place to stay. Listen, Fuzzy, why don't we give up and head back to Bolton City, where we came from? Uh, because you're under orders to take a vacation at the Lobos Ranch, or a reasonable accurate uh, facsimile or something like that. Huh? But you don't know any other place to stay. Well, that's why I'm going in the saloon here and ask this Wilkins fellow if he knows where we can put up. I'll wait here. And as soon as I get in the door, you run out on me? Oh, no, you don't. Undo yourself in that saddle and come on in with me. Don't be that way. Well, sit down. Let you and me have a little talk, huh? I'll have to ask you to leave again, Mr. Bailey. Oh, now, look, I'm a good customer here. I buy all my drinks here and I pay hard cash. I think that entitles me to some consideration. It entitles you to what you pay for, not my company. Now, please get out. Come here. You heard what the lady said. I heard what she said, all right. My ears ain't bent over. Though yours are gonna be if you don't mind your own business.
I'm afraid he's had a nasty bump. Throw some cold water on him. He'll be all right. Look out! longer that way. You should last till you're about 120. You know anything about what goes on around Rock Creek? I know about everything that goes on around Rock Creek. What do you know about the Lobos Ranch? I know it's a big place, making money hand over fist. It was built up by Steve Lobos, who kicked the bucket and willed it to a nephew from Chicago, a fellow by the name of Wayne Dawson. Any other information you want? Yeah. How come he's so opposed to strangers around the place? It's his property. I mean, do you think he might be up to something illegal? I don't know. I'll never ask him. Maybe somebody should. Well, thanks for the information, Sheriff. Take it easy now. I always do, son. I always do. Shy, you were right. We should have stayed in Bolton City. Gone out to whip Wildcats. Anything but this. Let's go home. Aren't you staying in Rock Creek, Mr. Davis, Cheyenne Davis. Well, I don't know about staying. My partner can't seem to make up his mind. Oh, my mind's made up like a dance hall gal's face. We're going home. After what happened here and not the ranch, I've had enough. He means about the place we were supposed to put up at, the El Lobos Ranch. Do you know something about the place, miss? No. No, not a thing. Well, thanks for taking care of Fuzzy. It's nice to have met you. Thank you. Sure glad you made up your mind to leave. Who said anything about leaving? I was just thinking maybe a little stay around Rock Creek might do me some good. Oh, so that's it, the gal, eh? Well, we're heading back to Bolton City just like you wanted to. When Marshal Conroy gives me an order, I carry it out. We're going to the Lobos Ranch. You said you didn't want a vacation. It won't be a vacation. We're going to get jobs. Jobs? We go out there, we get shot. If they use us for targets, I'll insist on getting paid extra. It won't do you any good if you're a bullseye. couple of good cow hands? Well, you'll have to see my foreman. He does all the hiring around here. And I might say he's quite particular whom he hires. Yes, we found that out. Oh, you already talked to him, huh? Well, yes, he asked us a lot of questions and said we were all right, but to check with you first. Well, if you're all right with him, you're all right with me. Take your horses around and put them in the back, and then report to McCord. McCord? Is he the foreman here? That's right. McCord. Oh, give me strength. Cheer up, Fuzzy. We made it. Hey, we've been at this four hours steady. How about a rest? You want it to work. Now work. I'll teach you fellas going over my head to the boss. And don't let me catch either one of you over that main house again. It's all right if I have a talk with Dawson after hours, isn't it? You were hired to dig, not talk. Come on, get that pick working. Put some life behind it. You too. How do you like the Lobos Ranch? Crazy about it. Look, fire and brimstone, too. 
But I'm going to hit the sack, and it's going to take soldiers with cannon to wake me up. Uh, then I won't have to be quiet when I come in. What do you mean? Where are you going? Over to the saloon for a while. Oh, so that's it. <laughs> Couldn't be that pretty little gal, could it? It is. She knows something about this place that gives her the shivers every time she thinks of it. What I know about it gives me the shivers, too. But I'm going to bed and let myself unwind. Okay, Fuzz, if you don't want to go, I'll see you in the morning. All right. Hey, shot! Wait for me! I never saw a saloon closed at this hour. There's a light on. Maybe we can find out where the girl lives. Davis and Fuzzy, can we come in? Didn't expect to find you here after hours. Yeah, how come his saloon closes so early? Was Wilkins fellow, he's sick or something? I'm Wilkins, Faye Wilkins. You own this place? Yes, when my father died, this was all he left me. I have to keep the place running until I can find a buyer. What was it you wanted to see me about? We wanted to talk to you about the Lobos Ranch. I know there's something about the place that bothers you. It bothers us, too. Maybe you can help us. I, I don't know anything about it. It's only a fair exchange of information we want. Maybe we can help you, too. Please don't ask me. I can't tell you. I don't mean to be forceful, miss, but it's against the law to conceal evidence. But Wayne Dawson will kill me. I know he will. We'll see that no harm comes to you. All right. Sit down. about six months ago. I just put away the cash in the office safe. But it was late. The place had been full of customers all evening, and I was terribly tired. Just as I started to leave... Who runs this place? I do, but we're closed for the night. We've had a long, hard trip, and we want some drinks. I'm sorry. You'll have to come back tomorrow. No, we want them now. You lock up when I tell you to. Now get over there in your office. My friend and I have some important business we want to talk over. I'm afraid you'll have to do your talking elsewhere. I said get back into your office. The sheriff will take care of you. You do just as I say.
killed him. You didn't see anything. I did. I saw you kill him. It wasn't self-defense. I said it was in self-defense. I'm Wayne Dawson. I came out here from Chicago to take over some property that my uncle Stephen Lobos had left me in his will. That man was my attorney. I never knew until tonight why he insisted upon following me out here, but he wanted that ranch. He was going to kill me to get it. Why, he didn't try to kill you. Yeah, but you're not telling anybody. You're keeping your mouth shut. If I see even the slightest indications that you've said anything or that you're about to say something, I'll kill you. You hear me? You're hurting my arm, please. You talk. And from that minute on, you'll never know when or where it'll happen. Some dark night on your way home or maybe in your sleep. Let go of me, please. I won't say anything. I promise I won't say anything. <laughs> Since then, I've, I've been afraid to keep this place open after dark. Tell me. Are you sure the man was dead? Yes. I'm positive. And you have no idea who he was? No. Or uh, where Dawson hid the body? No. Now, don't you worry, Miss Wilkins. We'll do everything we can to see that Dawson pays up and that you're safe. Well, don't you think you ought to see the little lady home? I'm afraid that wouldn't be much of a trip. You see, I live right here. I fixed up the office. That's a good idea. you better stay close to home. I'm sorry if, if I was a little upset. I feel much better now. Please let me know what happens. You're the star witness. I'll have to keep in touch with you. Good night. <laughs> I thought we'd get a good night's sleep, and the first thing in the morning we arrest Wayne Dawson for murder. Our star witness will tell the judge and the jury what she saw, and Mr. Wayne Dawson is no longer an active member of the human race. Sounds fine to hear you tell it, Fuzzy, but the law says that in order to convict a man for murder, you've got to prove he killed someone. Well, didn't Miss Faye Wilkins see him kill someone? Yes, but Wayne Dawson could say that the man was only wounded, that after bandaging the wound, his little friend got up and walked away, whistling Dixie. Well, to actually prove he did a kill, and then we got to find the body. That's right. Cinch. All we have to do is dig up every square foot of dirt in Arizona territory. That's what we're up against, Fuzzy. We better start looking for some fast leads. Well, let's talk about it in the morning. I'm going to sleep on my feet. The place to start is the Lobos Ranch tonight. You think you could stay awake for a little burglary, Fuzzy? Fuzzy. Wake up. Hey, you know what I think, Shy? I think I... breaking into Wayne Dawson's house for? Try and find a copy of Steve Lobo's will before Dawson and McCord find out we lied to get on the ranch. Something tells me I ought to be making out a will. Uh, what's the big idea? Well, it's a long chance, but we're short on clues. Come on.
Steve Lovis. I do buy here, Will, to the party of the first part, to the party of the second part, the piece of the part of the other part is... It's not the part I want. Got a good look at that wheel. Let's get out of here. Him and keep him quiet. You've heard what the man said. Howdy. Do you belong here? Why, oh, yes, I work here. A little warm in the bunkhouse. Thought I'd come out and get some air. Yeah, it is kind of warm. I'm Jim Anderson, postmaster up at Rock Creek. Glad to know you. You can do me a favor. Take this letter up to the ranch house. Special delivery for Wayne Dawson. Sure, right away. 
thanks. I'll do you a favor sometime. All right, that's a deal. I had to clip him on the chin so I could tie him up. He was getting too hard to handle. Well, let's go someplace where we can talk. Well, how about that letter? You want to leave it at the house? Later, maybe. All I could figure out in the will was that Wayne Dawson comes from Chicago and his brother Matt lives in Denver. His brother Matt? What's he doing in the will? Well, when old Steve died, he left the place to both of them. <clears throat> Matt Dawson, more than likely, is one of them city fellers who wasn't keen on living at the ranch. It's more likely Wayne Dawson wasn't keen on sharing the ranch with his brother and shot him in the saloon. By Jasper, I believe you're right. Let's not jump at conclusions. Let's see what this says first. It comes from a lawyer's office in Denver where Matt lives. Listen to this. We regret to inform you that your brother Matt died of heart trouble yesterday. Since there are no other surviving relatives of Stephen Lobos, you are now full owner of the Lobos property. Yours truly. Well, then it wasn't his brother that he killed. Hmm. Might even consider him, Matt, to kick the bucket at a time like this. Now, if we could have got him to the ranch, maybe we could have straightened this whole thing out. We are going to get him to the ranch. You mean the dead man? That's the fire, Fuzzy, and get some sleep fast. We gotta get started early. I thought I told you not to disturb me till noon. Oh, it's about them two cowhands. They tried to rob the house last night. Well, did you get them? Well, not exactly. They got away after stealing a special delivery letter that came for you from Denver. Oh, so you let them get away, huh? Well, I couldn't help it. They jumped me from behind and had me tied up all night. Hmm. Maybe Matt is coming here after all. Well, if he is, we're through. We gotta get that letter. Now, what are you gonna do? Write an invitation to the deceased? Inviting him to visit Rock Creek or write to Marshal Conroy stating, uh, having a wonderful time. Wish you were here. Well, the postmaster promised to return a favor that I didn't do for him last night. Meet me at the saloon, Fuzzy. It's a pleasure. Don't forget to give that special delivery letter to Wayne Dawson when he comes. Sure thing, Cheyenne. Thanks a lot for helping me out. Forget it. We're both working for the same boss, aren't we? Me? Yes, I'm looking for you. And I demand to know by what right you have to give my special delivery letter to an unauthorized cowhand. Oh, you mean Cheyenne Davis? Well, he told me he was working for you. He was fired. Him and his goat-faced friend, they lied to get on the ranch. They're crooks. And I thought they looked like such respectable, law-abiding citizens. At least the one I gave the letter to. Well, they aren't. We want that letter. Oh, you want the letter? Well, why didn't you say so? Mr. Davis dropped it off here this morning. Said he forgot to bring it up to your house. It's working. 
For the life of me, I don't know why you let that Dawson get his hands on his letter. Now, don't you worry, Fuzzy. I'm sure Cheyenne knows what he's doing. My dear brother Ween, I've been feeling better, and on the advice of my doctor, I am coming to live on my share of the Lobo's Ranch. This should be an especially joyous reunion, since we haven't seen each other since we were kids. See you before noon on the 15th. Your loving brother, Matt. Mm. 15th tomorrow morning. By tomorrow afternoon, we're through. Maybe and maybe not. He could have an accident on the way. Sure. A nice permanent accident. <laughs> Well, now, maybe you let us in on why you had the postman give Wayne Dawson his letter. It was his envelope with a letter in it that I wrote over in the post office. And that's the real letter. That's right. You better let me take charge of that, just in case. You know, now I'm beginning to understand Cheyenne's theory. The man I saw killed was the real Wayne Dawson. And the killer is a crook. He not only stole the ranch, but also the name of Wayne Dawson. See, give you time and pay his help, and you figure everything out for yourself. Oh, I got it all figured out. Except in... How are you going to trap that phony Wayne Dawson? By getting somebody to play the part of Matt Dawson. Somebody this Wayne Dawson has never seen. I know just the man. He was a friend of my dad's. His name is Delhaven. He lives in Blairsville. It might be dangerous. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. All right. Telegraph him to meet me at Boulder Notch tomorrow morning at 11 for instructions. Come on, Fuzzy. Where are we going? To the harness shop. Here you are, handmade special. Not another one like it in the country. There's something extra for your trouble. Now, don't forget what you're supposed to do tomorrow. I'll handle the situation just as you explain, Cheyenne. Thanks again. Well, what's the idea of having me standing guard? Are you robbing the place? No, I was a legitimate customer, and I paid a lot more than this was worth, too. Don't tell me it's a saddle for a midget. No, it's a gift for our friend, Mr. Delhaven. Something for his stomach. For his stomach. He's got to come in over the pass, and we're getting a good early start. So it looks like my brother will have his joyous reunion after all. I know a good place to ambush him near Boulder Notch. will be at Boulder Notch. I'm sure he will. All right, Fuzzy. But, McCord, we can't miss him. On time, Fuzz. There's Boulder Notch. Yeah. I don't see any sign of Delhaven. He'll be along. Why, oh, there's a man in a surrey. It must be Matt Dawson.
busy. Somebody's after Delhaven. Yeah, it looks like Dawson and McCord. Hey, what are we waiting for? This isn't a holdup. You're Delhaven, aren't you? Well, yes. You must be Cheyenne and Fuzzy. That's right. Well, I didn't expect a reception like this. Neither did we. That was Wayne Dawson and his foreman after you. Yeah, we're sure glad you got through all right. You know that Dawson fellow's getting mighty desperate. Uh, are you sure you want to go through with this? <laughs> you don't think I'm going to let those two scare me off, do you? Well, now remember, you're the man from Denver. Yes, I know. Mr. Dawson in the flesh. That's right. Take this belt and be sure to wear it at all times. Well, that's a good one. The initial M for Matt. Now, when you get to the Lobos Ranch, here's what I want you to do. Oh, it's just our luck. Those two cowhands had to be out on the pass. I hope they didn't see us. Stop worrying, Dawson. They didn't see us. That I'm sure of. Well, the only thing I'm sure of is that Matt Dawson will be here any minute. Well, you can handle the situation. Remember Matt's letter saying you hadn't seen each other since you were kids? Well, what does that mean? It means he can't prove you're not Wayne Dawson any more than anybody else around here can. Yeah, but suppose he asked me something about the family. If he asks you, it means he doesn't know either. Give him any answer. If he tells you something, agree with him. Oh, sure. And if I make any mistakes? Well, it's uh, been so long, uh, I forgot. That's right. I am to see you. Come on and make yourself comfortable and tell me all about your trip. Well, yeah, that's it. Most exciting. You'll never believe this, but I was actually attacked by Indians. I'm sure they were Indians. Well, it takes more than a redskin to stop a Dawson, eh, Matt? Oh, I'm so glad you came through all right. Now, take care of my brother's team and then bring his bags in, will you? Oh, uh, I forgot. Uh, this is my, uh, I mean, uh, our foreman, uh, Buck McCord. I'm glad to know you, Mr. McCord. You must show me around the place sometime soon. I will. Oh, you have no idea how happy I was when I got your letter. I mean, that good news about uh, you being well enough to come out here and live. A marvelous new doctor. He told me that this outdoor life would keep me till I was 100. Oh, most encouraging. Nice place Uncle Steve left us here, Wayne. We must be making lots of money. Well, things aren't always what they seem, Matt. The fact is, uh, we're operating at a loss. You know what the real thrill was in getting well enough to come here? Not the money. The thought of seeing you again after all these years. Yes, I know. I, I understand. It has been a long time, hasn't it? Since you were 14 and I was 8. Things didn't go so well for Dad, and you had to go and live with Uncle Willis in Chicago. Yeah, I know, but, uh, well, that's been so long ago that it's just a vague memory. 
But of course you remember Dad giving us a belt apiece with our initials on them. Oh, yes, sure. I remember that. And making us promise we'd wear them so long as we lived? Yes, yes, of course I remember. Well, I've never been without my belt, except for when it was being made larger. Well, to tell you the truth, neither have I. Fact is, mine is in the harness makers being made a little larger right now. You know, age uh, adds a little here. You know, I feel so undressed without it, but, uh, well, I'll have it back by tomorrow, sure. Do you mind if I go to my room? The trip was just a little tiring. Why, of course not, Matt, my dear boy. Your room is the second one down there to the left. How'd you make out? Saddle up the horses. We're going to the harness makers. If Wayne Dawson had hurt Mr. Delhaven in any way, I wouldn't care. I'd tell what I knew to everyone. I don't think you had to put yourself in danger. Wayne Dawson will hang himself with that belt. But suppose Mr. Delhaven does expose Dawson as a fake. Won't we still have to find the body to convict him of the killing? We won't have to find it. Wayne Dawson will lead us right to it. It's a simple job, a letter W carved out of silver. Why, I'll draw it for you exactly. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Dawson, but I'm filled up with work. I couldn't get to that for a couple of months. Now, if you'll make that for me by tomorrow or uh, any time during the week, I'll give you $100 extra. Look, Mr. Dawson, I couldn't do it for you at any price. There's no silver. Tried to get some myself. Wrote dealers all over the territory. Something or other to do with the government. Well, are you positive about that? You wouldn't think I'd turn down $100. Nice work, Liam. You really convinced him with that government yarn. That's fast thinking. You gotta do some fast thinking when you're looking for a reason to turn down $100. Well, I hope to tell you. Boswick's always been stubborn that way. What he needs is a good beating. I'll get him to make that belt for you. Now, wait a minute. I don't need Boswick. I'll get that belt off of Wayne Dawson's body, and it'll be the real thing. I wouldn't be in too much of a hurry to go digging. Let me work him over. He'll come around. Well, it's worth a try if you think you can do it. You go on back to the ranch. Well, McCoy, uh, well, what are you doing around here? Never mind about me. What are you doing? Oh, I have my harness fixed. I don't see a horse around any place. Oh, shucks. I plumb forgot he's around the back. You sneaked into town, is that it? I'm getting to the bottom of this. Hey, you can't you shut me around with it. been in here since I left? No. What's the matter with you? Oh, I get nervous spells now and then. I, I think it's heat. Uh, you don't mind, do you? <laughs> you can bet I fixed that McCord fellow so he's probably still around. Are you positive McCord didn't get to Boswick? I'm counting on you. Oh, I'll cross my heart and hope to swallow a pitchfork. Fuzzy, I'm leaving Faye in your care. You stay here and protect her. Oh, not shy. I, uh, you know how women and I get along. I, well, if you don't want to stay here and protect her, you can come along with me. Oh, it ain't that I don't want to protect a lady, but uh, uh, where are you going? 
Well, if Dawson couldn't get the belt from Boswick, he'll have to take it off the body. And I mean to follow him out to where he buried it. Hey, shot! I never run out on you, but uh, Faye here, she needs protection, and I... Uh... I thought you'd see it that way. Where's that chump who calls himself Matt Dawson? He's out looking over the property. What do you mean, calls himself Matt Dawson? Matt Dawson is dead. If I ever get my hands... Now, just a minute. Is that what you found out from Boswick? I didn't have to see Boswick. I found this letter on one of those cowpokes. That goat-faced one. The letter we got from the postmaster was a phony. There's the real one. Oh, so that's it, huh? You keep a watch here. I'll go look in his bag and see if we can find out who he really is. Did the rights. I found that telegram. Mr. Del Haven, need your help desperately. Meet Marshal Cheyenne Davis and his pal Fuzzy at Boulder Notch tomorrow at 11 a.m. He will explain everything. Don't fail me, love. Faye Wilkins. Faye Wilkins? So she told that Marshal, huh? You take that girl out to the cabin. I'll finish her and her marshal friend off at the same time. I'll pick some men, then go after the girl. Yeah, but you better use the back door. Cheyenne's probably watching the house. And when you go after the girl, use the back trail. much of a chance that Wayne Dawson found it, is there? No, not Dawson, but his foreman, McCord. When we were wrestling over in front of Boswick's, I... Hey, I gotta go see something. This is for you, Miss Wilkins. Just a minute. Who gave you this? I don't know who he was, miss. He just gave it to me and said he was a messenger from Cheyenne or something or another and was important. Oh, thanks. Cheyenne, what is this? 
A trap. And neatly sprung if I do say so myself. Johnson, come here. Where is Cheyenne? He'll be here. Just keep yourself calm. You'll see him. Place your man at the windows. He'll make a nice reception committee for our nosy marshal. And see that the lady is made comfortable till a friend shows up. to see where the body was buried, huh? I'm surprised at you, Marshal, walking right into your own trap. I haven't walked into it yet, Dawson, or whatever your name is. Just keep on calling me Dawson until my men in the cabin start to fire. You don't think you'll get away with killing the United States Marshal, do you? Oh, yes, I think I will. If I can prove he's crooked, then I have the proof, you know. Robbing the mail, using the mail as a fraud, and sending an imposter out here to claim my property. That won't be much proof from you. You won't be able to contradict me. You won't be there. If you give your man a signal, you'll be dead before a shot ever comes from that cabin.
shy. I had an awful time trying to kiss you. Get her open. Let's tie him up. Oh! You don't need to tie him up. A nice place, this ranch. Why don't you sell your business, Faye, and buy it? Why do you think I've been looking at the place? The next time you come to Rock Creek for a vacation, the Lobos Ranch will be a real place to get a rest. Yeah, it'd be kind of nice to have Miss Wilkins waiting here for us instead of that McCord fella. Thank you very much for your hospitality, Faye. Now we have to go back to Bolton City and report to Marsha Conroy. Before you go, Cheyenne, I'd like to say one thing. I'm getting kind of old and useless, I guess. Why don't you stay here and take over the sheriff's job? No, thanks. Maybe Fuzzy would like the job. Uh, no, sirree. Why, the marshal's office couldn't get along without me. I'm the toughest man they got working for me. Besides, I'm the best rider they got. Hey, who turned my horse around? <laughs> <laughs>